Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Fight Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. This week we are going back to the World Cup in Coper once again and we're looking at the final of female team sparring 1835 years and this is a match between uh, Argentina, Team Bordias and uh, the national team of Slovenia. So huge, huge match, end of a very, very good division. So hopefully you'll very much enjoy this one. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. So we're going to switch things up with team sparring this week after checking out some of the individual senior divisions in the last few weeks. Um, for anybody who is unsure about team sparring, how it works in this particular ITF group is it's based on flags. What we mean by flags is there's four corner judges in each match. Each corner judge that votes for a particular side, that vote is carried towards that team. So for example, if you win on all four judges cards that's a 4-0 win for you and you carry a 4-0 lead into the next match so that's how it works in our particular itf all five matches have to go ahead so yep. even if the, the the bout is one let's say in three three matches then the next two still will go ahead so it can be any way obviously um and it, tactics come into play a little bit different compared to the individual bout so sometimes a win or a draw is not necessarily the same value let's say so like sometimes an individual you want to maybe avoid that loss by one flag where in team that might be enough for your team to win so it, it, it is a different battle and a different um solution process let's say absolutely and really it does come down to making very very quick decisions under pressure around mm. who should go against who and what the predicted outcome of that match is in terms of the number of flags so uh some really good educated guesswork goes on there as well and yep. knowing the uh, the opposition team and knowing the skills and capabilities of your fighters comes into this in a big 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 way yeah and it's like as well it's like you put your best fighter against their best fighter and hope to get a four nil and take them out of it or do you try to get your best fighter a, a handy 4 nil, let's say, against somebody else? So, like, there's a lot of these decisions that come into play as well. Excellent. So, let's just kick off with our first fight. And uh, for the duration here, we have Slovenia in blue, Argentina, Team Bordias in, uh, in red. Yeah, so this one starts off a little testing with the front leg in particular. So, in and out on the front leg. And both girls are actually trying to find that entry on the leg to set up the hands it looks like so a lot of this at the start of the match blue goes ahead nice and early and then you see like from there really that the onus is going to be on red here now to kind of push the play which she does here but blue does a great job of nice countering as well and so far has a 4 nil lead with half the match gone yeah and we can definitely see that you know once that lead is established the you know the the backward trending movement so keeping that side facing stance drifting to the back making it difficult for her right legged opponent to find a shot that's actually going to connect meaning that she's really argentina really need to connect to hands here and it can be difficult sometimes to make the, the scores clean and a lovely kind of counter attack there from uh, Slovenia as well yeah good decision to yeah, press forward that's a great thing to do when the pressure is coming on you you're winning and the other person thinks they need to go ahead yeah, it's a great decision for you to actually go forward. I think as well what we see from Slovenia here in particular is the, and this is a feature in the female game as a whole, the, the jumping punch on the, the retreat seems to be a nice option as a counter for entry to hands, particularly for the females. And I know um, Thomas Brada's crew and Brada team, they, they do like this. I know Nej a few years ago was a big fan of this as well to counter an oncoming blitz. So I think in particular for the females, it works really, really well. Yeah, it can break the momentum as well because you know you're you're not going backwards. You're you know you're going up, and uh, if your opponent's momentum has stopped, it does allow you to land out of that sometimes and into the legs. Of course, the fear is that you know if you miss time your jump, you're basically waiting to land onto the person's leg, and uh, you know it's not yeah. a nice experience when that happens. No. Again, just for anybody watching this who's not so familiar with team sparring, particularly from our ITF, you can see all the competitors lined up to the right side of the Argentinian coach, the left side of the Slovenian coach and uh, those are the competitors who have yet to fight um, so it just helps with the coaches and with the, the teams identifying who's been up and who hasn't because you know one of the things since the helmets came in it can be difficult enough when people are sitting down like across the way like that to really identify who's who um, so you know it, it does make things a little bit more challenging so we now have them moving to the opposite side of the coach's chair so it's really really clear who the competitors are who've been up 
Uh, and on the scoreboard, we'll see as we go into the next uh, fight to the left of the time that's ticking down in the middle there in the yellow, you'll see the scores and the who's in the lead and who's not. So that snapshot becomes very, very important as you get late game into the match when you're sending a competitor out there. And it's not necessarily that you're sending them out with the absolute need that they win or but but rather that they, they get a score in terms of the flags and it's so it influences decisions mid-match quite heavily yeah definitely and just from a, a takeaway from this particular match from a sparring skill point is blue hair does a great job of actually finding angles on hands and i think that's a, it's a great takeaway as well especially on the countering slash defensive style mm. st- uh, side i should say um, she does a great job of pulling some angles just to not have that forward momentum coming towards her all the time very very good so we move into match two with Slovenia carrying a 4-0 lead at this stage and uh, you know depending on who's sending out uh, that's a very nice place to be so you know if you've sent out your first fighter and you've got a 4-0 loss you're in massive pressure because you're going to need to send out your best fighter next um, to try and you know resettle the match Uh, so you know that makes it very very difficult for you uh you know as you get to the tail end of the matchups you're not going to have as much agency to pick matches to suit yourself yeah this is another close one it was a good good match um for me the, the girl in blue from slovenia very uh, much um like a point fighting style and trying to find that entry to get nice and clear in goes for the shot here takes the gamble and red from argentina pulls off a nice defensive side kick yeah. but that kind of tends to be the battle of this match then it's front leg side kick versus front hand on the entry where Blue often tries to get nice turning kicks in as well, but doesn't seem to get the value on the scoreboard. There's a good example of one there. Um, nice and clear, nice and long, but this match ends up actually being a draw on the end of a score of 2-2. Yeah, exactly. 2-2 draw at the end of it. And, you know, where you know we've got a running total there of 6-2 to two in favour of Slovenia. And in a position like that, again, we were saying right at the very beginning, if you're the person who's sent in first and you get a 4-0 win you know that doesn't give you as much information because did you get you know a weaker opponent off the team uh did they mismatch it did they just misjudge it it's harder to know but you're in a very strong position not necessarily in terms of information but in terms of your score and you know that the next person the other team uh, is going to send in has to be a strong fighter because no one can afford to go eight nil down the match is almost Mm -hmm. over at that stage so you're going to get a strong fighter so Let's say, for example, in this case, and I'm not actually 100% sure who sent in first, but if Argentina sent in first and lost and then had to send in another uh, one of their stronger fighters in the second instance, Slovenia can respond that way and try to neutralize it. So a 2-2 result for Slovenia is actually fantastic in this situation. That's actually how it played out because Argentina sent first. Ah, So good observation. So now the, the... the favour and the, the advantage, let's say, is in Slovenia's hands, I think. Yeah. So if you're looking at this going into match three, and we already know where the result goes, so you have two choices. You can either look to bury them, which is you... Uh, so again, this is Argentina's send again. Uh, so they have to send first. So you can kind of look at it and go, right, we're going to try and 4 nil this, or you just go, right, we'll burn this match. We don't we don't actually need this, really. We can hold our heavy hitters for the end and fight their tail-end fighters. Um, and it, it's that's where, you know, it really says an awful lot about what is your confidence in your next fighter, I think. Yeah, fight three is a big one. And you need to be careful, as you said, because you can't put all your good fighters in and then have nobody left for the last two fights. You do need some good, solid competitors in your last two. Um, but here, it looks like that Slovenia actually send out a, a very competent fighter yeah. and puts puts the pressure with that front leg really, really early, has a great front leg and able to flick that up, hold in the carry um, after the initial shot and picks off a couple of headshots really with that with that front leg but we can see there's a big height advantage then as well which is massive if you can get a lead early on which this particular girl obviously is quite solid at because of her front leg and now her distance because of her height advantage in team sparring is a massive advantage when she's 4-0 up absolutely and where we end up is uh, we end up with this interesting situation where um, you know one flag any flag at all would be fantastic for argentina and it comes very very close to putting it back we see that it becomes a one point game you know as we go into the last moment 
Um, yeah, like very interesting actually that blue goes forward there. You yes. know, with, with with the match so close, I don't know was the coach absolutely screaming at her at that moment. But <laughs> sometimes in the in that moment, the competitor might not be as clear about what the situation is on the That's scoreboard it. at That's the very the coach very end. Is so important than the teammates, yeah. And you can see as we get just to, towards this last moment, like there is a contact. Uh, you know, uh, and it's like, oh, okay. You know, should I go? Should I not? But yeah, I, I definitely, if I, if I'm coaching Blue at that stage, I'm like, we have exactly what we want. Let's, let's back this up and uh, and walk away. And especially it, when she has the whole ring behind her as well, she has loads yeah, of space. Yeah, and you know, even in terms of like conceding potentially on a warning, you know, you won't lose the. Whole, you'll, you'll go to two, two nil. And at that point, you're you're eight two up. You're in pretty good place anyway. But this puts Slovenia ten two up. Uh, you know, and there's two matches left. So after three, now they haven't won. There are still eight cards available. So Argentina now are hanging on for a miracle. They're looking for to, to pull this back to a draw. They need two four nil wins. Um, but they have very little choice about what they've got left. You know, so you know it, it's quite difficult. And Slovenia are sending in. So as we go into fight four, this is uh, 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 Slovenia send. And uh, they have uh, uh, Ursa Terden to send in there, which is a very, very solid fighter to be putting in at uh, match four. Yeah, and like so experienced as well, knows how to score, knows how to win. Um, so that, that's the kind of fighter that you want in these particular situations. You know, she's very, very sure of what she needs. I'm very confident she understands that she only needs one flag and that's enough for her team um so and she's got a little bit of a mismatch here it does look like the Argent her, her argentinian opponent has the height advantage and uh but you know at the same time when you don't have to go and win and you have that goal of like we were saying before you only need to take one flag if one flag oh. comes out at blue slovenia win this and it ends up yeah. being that 2-2 draw um but and, like you know she can lose 3-1 and still win the whole match I think this is a good tactical decision as well because Red has to come to Ursa and one of Ursa's best weapons, in my opinion, is her defensive, defensive psychic, psychic yeah. which we see right here. Sure. Um, so because she has to come forwards, um, that like that's a great option for her. It's a good tactical decision by the coach there on the Slovenian side. Yeah, definitely. Well done, Bernard. So, you know, and this brings it to a point where, again, it's the 12-4 to 4 and, uh, you know, the, the last match in this instance, it doesn't matter. Slovenia have the work done at this stage. Um, and, you know, it's worth saying at this stage how easily this could be so different. So if the first match doesn't come out that way, you know, so if the if the matches go a little different, the first match comes out, let's say, with a 2-2 draw, 1-1 draw, or so, uh, you know, a narrow win, it changes the entire running order of that match. So that first send sometimes is very high risk, high reward. You get it right and you get a 4-0 lead, uh, particularly, you know, when you're reacting to your opponent's uh, uh well, let's say their send they send out the opponent if you can get that and you can get a 4-0 win there sometimes it throws the whole order out of the window after that and it becomes very very difficult so you know we now see Argentina uh, effectively chasing their tail and trying just to you know they're left with okay this is who we have left this is going to be our last match uh, you can see there was still two choices left uh, Argentina did have six competitors and can only pick uh, you know they can only enter the five so uh, like this is a tough one and, and sometimes when the match is already won um it, it's sometimes it's almost an ego battle for the two fighters individually yeah. because chances are it's probably your two best fighters left who probably want to go off each other just for the and that's kind of what we see here they're just giving it socks going yeah. for it um so that's kind of where it usually goes if the match is already won or lost where both of these fighters just kind of want to test themselves against the best really yeah and i think it's camilla cannot there from argentina um so again, very, very experienced competitor who obviously they've held off to be able to get that tail end match. But unfortunately, the match has been decided before it got to her. Um, you know, but and like it, it all comes back as well, like how many solid fighters you have on your team. If you have a team of great fighters, great. Whereas if you're yeah. carrying maybe two or three people, it becomes more difficult where you fit them in. And I think that the important parts are the, the start and the end of the contest you don't want your like your average fighters to be in the last two fights and you probably don't want them to be in the first fight either yeah. because as you said and as we've seen in this one going behind 4-0 at the start puts you in big trouble because now you have to adjust and you probably have to put top fighters in earlier than you want to which is not ideal 
it doesn't give you too much influence over the tail end of the running order. Yeah. So, yeah, this one finishes 3 0 to Slovenia and a 15 2, or sorry, a 15 4 uh, score overall across the entire match. But, you know, it, I, I did enjoy this one as an exposition of, you know, what can happen in team sparring and in terms of the strategy and tactics that do get applied. So easy to get a mismatch. And I mean, like you were saying there, you know, sometimes you're carrying weaker fighters. And in the World Cup in particular, where you had club teams and national teams and you had that big mix, some teams only had three or four fighters. So they were already, you know, a match down um, where some fight teams would have had five. But, you know, you'll have some more club level competitors as well as some international competitors as well yeah. in terms of the mix. What we're used to from our perspective is dealing with we have traditionally not the biggest teams, you know, when we talk about Ireland. So we only have a couple of people who can get a really good match against a bigger opponent on the other side. Um, so usually it's about us figuring out who the the best people to pull about a ring and score some points off of our, or, you know, who of our smaller fighters is able to go out and get a draw or, you know, or potentially just a low scoring win, you know, a one flag win or something like that against their opponent. And we're often trying to leave it so that our tail end fighters have a real fighting chance to go in have a fairly level match that if they come out on top of that we'll, we'll carry the team home so mm. you know we always say it's the most fascinating part of ITF uh, competition is the team sparring the the fastest strategic decisions are made and uh, and competitors have to react very very quickly to the you know the scoreboard and the coach so always fascinating to watch and you know this was a very engaging final both teams have been fantastic the whole way through and I think although this finished 15 4 to Slovenia I do think it comes down to the result of that first match. If that was a close match, I think it changes the running order. It changes the matches and you potentially get a very, very close fight the whole way. Yeah, like Team Sparring, like for me, especially coming through the ranks as a junior, it's always something that you see as the last event and it's something you want to be a part of. For sure. Um, so like everybody coming through as a, as a junior, coming up, stepping into the senior team, it's something that they aspire to be. Like everybody wants to win the individual title and like that's something that everybody wants to do if you compete at the high level. But everybody wants to be also part of the finals gala and the, potentially the main event of each competition. So Absolutely. it's nice to, uh, to have that, to experience it on center stage and, and be part of such a, a, a big part of any championships or any cup super so again congratulations ladies and very very well done and i hope everybody watching at home enjoyed that one as much as we did uh that is us for this week so we shall see you next friday yeah we'll see you in the next one bye now